hi guys welcome back to my channel okay last couple of vlogs i um showed you guys some behind the scenes of some film sets that i was on hope you enjoyed them so today i'm back to talking about certain things that i hope a lot of people can relate to and today i'm talking about nigerian men could be dating them could be friends with them but let's just get into it If you guys can relate to what I'm about to say, but hear me out. Now, let me start with probably maybe dating a Nigerian man and the early stages of dating one. I feel that there are a few behaviors, few character traits that they exhibit that I feel are a bit worrisome. Okay, let me explain a bit further. One of the things I'm talking about is their aggression um, their aggressive pursuit put it that way um you know they they want what they want sometimes they don't even ask you if you're in a relationship they don't ask you if you are even open to seeing them they don't even you know kind of like want to know if you're attracted to them they see you they like you they want you and that's all that matters i find that um um I find it good and bad. Good in a sense that when a man sees what he wants, he goes after it and that's final. Bad in the sense where if she doesn't want you, leave it alone. Um, because that could be borderline psychotic. Um, so that's one thing. And then I also feel like you also have to be a bit more emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence is basically managing your emotions and managing the emotions of people around you. Um, so understanding them and understanding their point of view, understanding where they are, be a bit em em empathetic and not, not make it about you. Um, so yeah, emotional intelligence plays a huge part because once you start to cross that border, you then cross over into um, narcissism. And narcissism is basically being self-centered and this heightened sense of self-importance. So, you know, when you don't put the other person's emotions or feelings into consideration and you make it all about yourself because of what you want, what you desire, then that's not good. I, I see this. I don't know if anybody else has witnessed this, but this is just what I've observed. Um... And I find them a bit controlling as well. Yeah. That controlling expert. I'll give you an example. So this is this guy I was talking to and I was still on the fence about, whew, was I going to go there? Was I, you know, just cut and run or what? Like, I wasn't really sure. But anyway, in the getting to know you stage, which is the very early days when we were still talking to each other, um, he had invited me to come and watch a football match with him and his friend and I did mention that I don't watch football and um but he insisted that I come um just hang out with him and also meet his friend and I was like well I don't really want to meet your friend and I don't really want to watch football because the two of you are going to be so engrossed watching that match that I'm going to be left there bored because I really do not like football I like I wouldn't go to um um to watch a match at a stadium if I had free tickets so, but he did not like the fact that I had turned him down and we got into a bit of an argument and there was a lot of back and forth as to why, you know, it would be good for me to come and spend time with him while he was watching football with his friend and why it was also a good idea to also meet the friend at the same time. And I didn't see the point of this and I was like, look, we can, we can get together, we can see each other after your match, but to come and sit with you while you watch that match. I just will not enjoy it. And it was just the sheer fact that he couldn't see reason with me. I was just like, man. And then there's a few other instances like that where I just thought, nah, this is not for me. You know, I don't see why we have to argue about everything every time. You know, almost as if I have, 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't have a voice or I can't decide for myself. I can't be my own person and say, this is what I don't, I want to do this or I don't want to do it. I, you know, there's compromise at some point, but you know, within reason. But if I say I don't want to do something like for instance, this, then it should be a problem. And I see that they can be very needy. Now, but you see that neediness sometimes comes with, depends on the person's circumstances, depends on the person's situation. I've realized that the Nigeria, that the married ones are actually more needy than the single ones. It could be as a result of maybe they spent so much time in their relationships or in their marriages where they want a bit of excitement and they want a bit of, they want an escape escape to this world that they've created with this person outside their marriage spend time with that refresh and then go back home you still have your family unit you still have you and your kids and then you then have this person this single person outside of your marriage home away from home that helps you reboot that helps you you know live that freedom that you don't get from being married over the years to this person so and then you want that solid passionate emotional connection with the person and when they don't give it to you it's a problem hmm. yeah so these are some of the issues and then i also feel like sometimes some of them are a bit borderline narcissist you know and i talked about emotional intelligence and if you do not sometimes possess that it could be a bit borderline narcissism self-centered you know so i see that because sometimes it's almost what like i said what they want is really what matters not what you want and i have a problem with that and i find it again very controlling and i'll give you another example of controlling there was someone that i met and again talking stages and he had said um asked me to take a trip and meet him in a country somewhere and i said no i wasn't gonna do that and he he didn't understand why like why could i not just take the trip you know even though i use work as an excuse but he thought yeah but you don't work in the weekend you can come on a friday and go back on a sunday and i said to him i said well look maybe if you want to meet me in person Whenever we find ourselves in the same country, then we would meet. But I don't really know you. Well, I don't want to hurt his feelings by saying I don't really know you that well to come to fly to this country and meet you. But I simply said um, I just used work as a cover up. But he was so offended that I didn't take that trip. And it it kind of like it was honestly from that point in, it was do nothing after that could he, he couldn't come back from it. He just could not come back from it. Um, and I found that absolutely, utterly ridiculous. Um, so yeah, so there you go. That controlling part is something I really cannot understand. Maybe it's to do with, maybe it's a, a general thing with men, but I'm not going to speak, you know, um, with other races. Uh, I just want to focus on Nigerian men today because maybe they're a bit fresh in my mind. <laughs> Um, then this whole controlling thing, it does have a way of stifling your voice. It does have a way of making you walk on eggshells. It does have a way of making you very, um, insecure and you start to, you know, second guess yourself and because you don't want to create conflict or you want to make sure this person likes you or you want to stay in their good books, you end up suppressing a lot of your voice and yourself in order just to please this person. And I don't buy into that. I don't subscribe to that at all. Another thing I want to talk about is how they kind of like sexualize everything. You know, again, maybe it's not just a Nigerian thing. It's a broad um, behavior um, across all men. But just for the sake of this topic today, I'm just talking about Nigerian men and some of my experiences. So I'll give you an experience. I'll give you an example about them sexualizing everything. Now, I work out a lot. If you've been following me, you know that I like my exercise and I'm a fitness enthusiast and, you know, I like to document and vlog um, about exercise and um, etc. So 
And sometimes when I exercise, I just have the serious backing. I've got this issue with my sciatic nerve. So sometimes it gets inflamed and it's triggered by some exercises that I do. So this certain time I was going through with pain and I was in so much pain. So a friend of mine had called me and this is someone that I knew from years back who I kind of like re recently reconnected with. And he had called me, so we'd been talking. And then, you know, he could hear the pain in my voice. And he asked me, oh, um, what's wrong? And I said, well, my back, it hurts. It really aches. And, you know, I've been struggling to, like, walk around. And, you know, it comes and goes. And I feel like it's maybe my posture, the way I sleep in bed. Maybe I'm not sleeping right. And then the response from him was, it's because you're sleeping alone. Like that was not the time, honestly. I was I was in like I couldn't stand up from where I was lying down. And this is it. You know, not oh, what painkillers have you taken? Um, let me speak to my doctor and find out what you can take. Have you seen a chiropractor? Have you had a massage? Maybe that can help. Do you know what the triggers are? It's because you're sleeping alone. Okay. That's one. Another one is um, I was talking to someone, again, early stages. And mind you, when I say early stages, I'm, it's the getting to know you stages. It's the stages where you're just having banter, conversations, feeling the person out, you know? So I feel like the whole sexual aspect of it, except it's mutual. But if it's not mutual and, you know, maybe in the first week of talking to somebody it might not be the right time to bring something like that up, you know? So again, I was talking to this guy and this was around Valentine where everyone was coupling up and, you know, all sorts of display of love all over the internet and social media. And I made a joke. I'm like, oh, how did you spend Valentine? I hope you had a great time. You know, I hope you took your woman somewhere nice. And he said, well, he doesn't have a Valentine. He doesn't believe in Valentine. I'm like, oh, well, okay. So, um, and we were just carrying on like that. And um, the next thing that comes out of his mouth is, do you want to do something naughty with me? Because he had already started hinting about um, how naughty he is, you know. And I kept dodging and dodging and dodging. But he realised I was dodging and he couldn't take it anymore. And he just went straight to it. Do you want to do something naughty with me? And the conversation just really ended there. Because I was like, come on now, dude. You know, like I've dodged you going there throughout this entire conversation. And you've realised that I've dodged you going there. And... You in order to just get me in a corner, you just came straight. And really and truly, that kind of ended the conversation for me. I wasn't interested in talking to him anymore. And this is where emotional intelligence comes in again. You know, if you're having conversations with the person and, you know, you can see that, that you're probably not on the same page, it, you read the room, read the room and apply yourself accordingly. Don't go left field and completely you know, um, irritate the person or make, make the situation uncomfortable. Look, I could go on guys, you know, and there's a lot that I could pinpoint, but these are just the ones that I'm like, let's discuss. And I don't know if anybody else has, has, has really experienced this because I see this all the time and I'm just like, man, but yeah, guys, um, what are your experiences with Nigerian men? I'm sure there are good experiences. I mean, okay, let's talk about the good thing. The good thing is that they're very generous. They like to look after their women. You know, I talked about the guy who wanted to take me on a trip. They do that a lot. You know, you don't really have to get to know them too well. And they really want to show you the world and give you the world. Um, they are providers um they're very strong um they take charge yeah so that there are a few things you know there are good 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 sides to them and but i just wanted to focus on my earlier points and you know just get that off my chest really <laughs> anyway thank you guys for watching and make sure you click on the subscribe button see you next time peace to you